Good evening everybody and welcome back to the channel. Tonight's episode is all about the brand new Ford Bronco and what Jeep decided to do right after Ford released the Bronco. So stick around, sit tight, I got as much information as I could possibly compile and right after this I'm going to share it with everyone. Okay, the much anticipated 2021 Ford Bronco release was tonight. I have the printout of all seven models that Ford has came out with to compete and pretty much go directly at the throat of Jeep. Funny part, Jeep was ready, which that I did not expect. I did not expect what Jeep was going to reveal tonight right after the Bronco released. I should have known something was going to happen, but they, they, they got this one overall and I think a lot of people. Now, the 2021 Ford Broncos come in seven, seven standard modes. That's the base, Big Bend, Black Diamond, Outer Banks, Badlands, Wild Track, and the first edition. Everything before Badlands and Wild Track, I'm really not gonna focus on. Um, those are going to be optioned differently for the different type of person who will be purchasing a 2021 Ford Bronco. For me, a person who drives a Jeep JL Rubicon, I'm going to focus on the Badlands and the Wild Track. Now, these two models come with pretty much the, the same options available to them. Now, their base models are different, but you can add additional packages to them to kind of compete with each other. The one big difference between the Badlands and the Wild Track is the motor. The Badlands has the 2.3 liter EcoBoost and the Wild Track has the 2.7 liter EcoBoost. Now the 2.7 liter EcoBoost is 310 horsepower and 400 foot pounds of torque. Now that's a twin turbo V6, which if you know anything about Ford, they have been heavy in the EcoBoost line for a long time. Even the Ford Raptor has a twin turbo EcoBoost. I had the Ford Raptor for a while. The Ford Raptor was great. That motor was really awesome and I'm actually really surprised at the power that it could produce. Um, I would have much rather had the V8, but that's neither here nor there. The point is Ford knows how to produce power with the EcoBoost V6 and I think throwing that into this new Bronco is a big deal. Now the Wild Track is really, in my opinion, the one that's probably going to get the most attention. Why they came out with seven I'm not really sure. It's all pretty much going to be the same vehicle, just with different options within the vehicle. So it's gonna be the same frame. It's gonna be pretty much the same body from what I understand on the very limited knowledge that I think anybody has right now. But they're going to come out with new options for those packages. And in my opinion, I would see them dwindling those down as time progresses. Now, my expectations for the Bronco have, have pretty much been blown away. I did not expect Bronco to be able to come up with a way to keep an ind independent front suspension while at the same time providing that articulation that I think everybody knows the Jeep for. Now, what that is, what the hydraulic stabilizer is, the mode that they have or the piece of equipment that Ford has engineered for that flexing ability. Now, it's basically a disconnect from what I understand, that you can disconnect under load that gives you a greater articulation while you're going over obstacles. Once you get back on solid ground, that automatically reconnects and you keep going driving in what I would assume is a standard mode. I don't know if they're going to have that as a disconnect like the sway bar disconnect in the Jeep where you can disconnect it and keep it disconnected because for me, it would get extremely annoying going over an obstacle, driving, 
25 or 30 feet on some flat road and then coming up on another obstacle and having to disconnect that hydraulic stabilizer. So I think it's a good play and it's a good option because the reality is 90, 85 to 90% of the people in the world who buy a Jeep Rubicon or they decide to buy one of these brand new 2021 Broncos will probably never take them off road. And if you've ever driven a Jeep, then you know that driving that Jeep on the road, it takes a while to get used to. It kind of has a little bit of body roll and it kind of does its own thing on the road until you get used to it and understand that you're not going to fly off a cliff. But the Ford Bronco will have that independent front suspension that is going to have a much better feel on road. Now, that's gonna be a big ploy for a lot of people that don't intend to ever take this vehicle off road, sadly. But that's, that's everybody's own uh, personal choice. Now, they have seven GOAT modes. Now, they patented the word GOAT and they use that to describe the different modes, the different terrain modes within the vehicle management system. Now, they have, I only have five of them because I wasn't able to find all seven and that is slippery, baja, mud, sand, and rock crawl. Now those are the different modes that you can put the vehicle into when you're going over different types of obstacles. I think that's a really great thing to have, but at the same time, in my opinion, it's a bit unnecessary. To have seven different modes to drive on wet roads or to drive through sand or to drive through mud or to rock crawl, I, I, I understand why they're doing it because it separates them from Jeep. And at the this that's what they need more than anything is to be above and beyond Jeep's capabilities. I'm gonna be honest, I don't think this vehicle is going to be above and beyond Jeep's capabilities. I think this is going to hurt the Forerunner more than the Jeep. As we all know, the Forerunner has gone several years without doing tr any true upgrades or updates outside of different wheels, um, a slightly larger screen that people really weren't excited about. So I think it may take some of those customers, but when you're talking about Toyota and Jeep customers, they're very loyal to that brand. And Ford has been out of the game for so long that I'm not sure that they're gonna be able to come back in and just capture that audience like everyone expects them to do. Now, I will say their promo video had me extremely excited. So excited, I went online to try to reserve one, and luckily I couldn't reserve it, even though I would still like to just to see how deep I can get and how much information that I will be able to pull once I'm able to build my own and then provide those specs to you guys. Now, the biggest thing that, in my opinion, that Ford released tonight was the ground clearance, approach angle, departure angle, and breakover angle. Now, the Bronco ground, ground clearance is definitely much better than the Jeep Rubicon. The Jeep Rubicon has a 10.8 inch ground clearance. The Bronco has an 11.6, it's almost a whole inch. I know that doesn't sound like a lot, but it is a lot when you're talking about going over rocks or you're going over any type of tough terrain because you never seem to really rip the whole rear differential out. You always seem to just chip it a little bit. So I think that's going to make a difference. It's nothing astounding, but it's definitely something to be noted. Now, the approach angle for both vehicles, the Jeep approach angle is 43.9 degrees. That's when you're coming up to a rock and the approach that you can take going up at what degree until you hit that bumper. Now, the approach angle for the Bronco is 43.2. They were boasting about the best approach angle in the, its class unless I'm getting wrong information, that's not accurate. The departure angle for the Bronco is 37.2 degrees. The departure angle for the Jeep is 37 degrees. So it's a 0.2 degree difference. And if I said inch earlier, I meant degree. It's late, I'm trying to get this video done. I'm trying to give you guys the information, so just bear with me. Now the breakover angle for the Bronco is 29 degrees. The breakover angle for the, the Jeep is 22.6 degrees. That's a big deal, right? So that's a large difference in the amount of degrees it's going to take for you to get high centered and stuck on a rock. Um, if you're an overlander, if you're an off-roader, whatever you are, that makes a difference and I think they did a great job with that. Now, all of that being said, 
Bronco has also decided to go with the Dana axles, which pretty much is a direct shot at Jeep because everyone knows that Dana, Dana axles are in pretty much every single Jeep there is and they are rock solid and everyone loves the Dana 44s in the Jeep Rubicon, Rubicon at least I do. Now, this new Haas system that Bronco came out with is a high performance off-road stability suspension with uh, Bilstein reservoirs and shocks. Once again, I think that is a awesome idea. I think it's going to appeal to a large market, but there's those true off-road guys and those overland guys that are going to modify whatever you give them no matter what. You could give me the best of the best and I'm probably gonna change it because I wanna build out my vehicle the way I wanna build out my vehicle and everybody has their own um, preference and their own way of building their rig. So I think it's a great option to have and it's a great place to start, but as you know with the aftermarket world, all of this is gonna be ripped out and new stuff's gonna be put in the first time somebody gets their hands on one of these Broncos anyways. Now, what Jeep did to me is what I have written down on this paper and this is the best part of the night. Now for the record, this isn't a Jeep channel. I'm not really a Jeep guy. I love Jeeps. I have a Jeep, but I'm not 100% dedicated or loyal to Jeep. I just know that I have a predominantly stock Rubicon. I have no lift. I did put bigger tires on it and I have taken that thing to places that it should not have gone and it made it there and it made it back and then I jumped on the highway and drove 1500 miles back home and had not had a single incident whatsoever so that to me speaks volumes for the Jeep brand so regardless of that right there I'm not a Jeep guy but I do love my Jeep and it's going to take a lot to get me to walk away from something that I have tested and I have put through its paces and has outperformed everything that I put it through now, Jeep Tonight introduced the 392 concept, which is a 6.4 liter V8, 450 horsepower, and 450 foot-pounds of torque. That is what everybody wanted. Now, granted, it's probably going to be in the range of sixty-five dollars to $70,000, but if I can go to the dealership and buy a 392, well, a 450 horsepower motor in a Jeep Wrangler, I would do it tomorrow. I would trade the Jeep in and I would do it tomorrow. My wife has been feeding me information to my right the entire time and anytime I talk about trading in the Jeep she gets a little bit sensitive and she's sensitive to that but that's the facts. I would figure out a way to go get rid of that Jeep and get the 392 tomorrow no questions asked because at that point there is nothing in the market that can compete with that vehicle. So Jeep I, I respect it. I respect the move. Now, with that 392 concept comes factory 37s with beadlocks. Now, I don't know if I mentioned it a minute ago, but Ford has released the Bronco with an optional beadlock. Now, I don't know if that is an additional ring. I don't really know how that beadlock works because obviously they're not ODOT approved. Um, so people Department of Transportation, ODOT is Ohio Department of Transportation. So people run beadlocks are not really supposed to, but to have that as an option, Jeep will be coming out with that factory 37 inch tires with beadlocks and a two inch factory lift. So all of that being said by, by Ford tonight, in who knows how long, all the Jeep enthusiasts, you will be able to go to the dealership buy a Jeep Wrangler Rubicon with a Hemi in it, have factory 37s with bead locks, and a two inch factory lift. Now for me, that is probably a perfectly built out rig. We are more into overlanding. I don't wanna say we're more into overlanding, but our overlanding takes us on some serious off-road trails. So overlanding is the ship that gets us to these situations that we probably shouldn't be in. And this vehicle that Jeep is talking about producing will definitely get my dollars. Now, by 2022, all models will be available with the 4XE electric vehicle technology in the Jeep platform. Every Jeep 
will have this 4XE electric capability and they just came out with that tonight on their Instagram, on YouTube. Every time I went to watch a new Bronco video, a Jeep ad would come up explaining the new options for the Jeep. Now, just like with the electric Mustang, everybody's rushing and trying to get to this electric model as quickly as they possibly can. And Ford, Bron or Ford just got there with the Mustang. Um, now they're cre producing this gasoline powered Bronco and now Jeep is producing an electric off-road machine. That's crazy, right? That is something out of a movie. Jeep, hats off to you. You still have my vote, even though I almost reserved one of these Broncos today. So if you think the Bronco has enough to beat the Jeep, or you think it's going to be what kills the Jeep, leave that in the comments and I'd love to hear what you have to say. If you haven't already, subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to see more videos like these, I will try to do follow-up videos about this concept as it becomes available and about the Bronco as it becomes available and try to keep everybody up to speed without having to do the hours of research that I'm going to, going to end up doing. Now, subscribe to the channel, check out our latest series up here, and we'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.